are there any things that you have concern about in terms of kind of public policy or anything like that, looking outside the school that you might have concerns about uh, in the you know future? Well, we always kind of keep our, we always kind of watch. Oregon enjoys a lot of homeschool freedom mm -hmm. compared to other states. Right. And um, so it's always possible that those will be, you know, taken away or shifted or a little, you know, affected mm -hmm. negatively. Mm -hmm. So we're, we keep an eye on being sure that homeschool freedom in Oregon stays intact. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. an important one. And then, I mean, the whole, uh, what's going on with options mm -hmm. and various forms of vouchering and, right. you know, school choice and all this kind of stuff that sounds so beautiful on the first blush. Yeah, and then yeah. you look a little deeper, it's like, I don't know, because it's a little bit of the, you know, wolf and sheep's sheep clothing, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But that's definitely a threat, I think, in the system mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of education. So what's going to happen with that that funding flow and how is that going to be managed and how is that going to be um, actually controlled? Right. Right. And it's, that's a little bit worrisome, I think for education right now, mm -hmm. there, there seems to be a lot of political will around the school choice thing right. that is actually uh, maybe grounded in an agenda to be able to teach whatever you want to teach with public funds mm, right. instead of maintaining some kind of, you know, church and state separation. Right. Right. <laughs> so it, it's a little bit, it's a little tricky. And I think that's going to be an interesting thing to watch over mm -hmm. the next few years. That's happening yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that sort of has been that sort of concern is, is a little bit underlying, you know, an element of what, when I created the uh, what I call the deeper learning resolution, is how can we kind of put um, put the the psychology of learning in policy so policy stops undermining learning? Right. But th so that would be an, a way of sort of okay, can if we could get a, a an explicit acknowledgement of what how psychological need support underlies all learning, uh, then then that can kind of mitigate against some of the ways that schools tends to exert control rather than support autonomy because literally that's the opposite so uh, i have an eye towards that <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah i haven't gotten much traction i know I, I i'm excited to listen to your whole manifesto i have just listened to part of the first oh right part. on yeah 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 i think good, we're up good to for you episode good four or you. five now has been released, awesome so it, and it's a it's a 10-part series so so yeah the the manifesto is is definitely part of that is trying to get a more concise way of explaining how these things work uh, yeah. into the into the conversation publicly so um, good so yeah. this is the agentic schools vodcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills what makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.